Full disclosure, before we get started, Ameridroid did send me this Odroid C2 to review. I do not make any money from Ameridroid if you order from them or you don't order from them. I just believe in the company and they do a great job. Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I just want to do a little unboxing. We're going to do some benchmarking of the Odroid C2. Now, Ameridroid was kind enough to send me a bunch of stuff for the Odroid C2 so I could show you guys. If you haven't tried out Ameridroid, I will leave a link in the description for you. They are awesome. They deal with single board computers and components for your single board computers. They're based in the United States, so you don't have to worry about that Chinese shipping. And the guys are really nice over there. Let's go ahead, see what we got here. Then we're gonna move on over and test out Android. Now, this is the first video on the Odroid C2. I'm gonna run some benchmarks and test some Android games. Let's get right into it. First up, obviously, we gotta take this out of the package here. This is the Odroid C2. And I've had a lot of viewers want me to test this board out. So Ameridroid sent me one over with some peripherals. This thing looks pretty slick here. So there's the board itself, Odroid C2. I have a Raspberry Pi 2 to compare the size. Same size. I also have the Odroid XU4 here. I like this heat sink. All right guys, for you guys who are not familiar with the Odroid C2, this is obviously a single board computer, the same size as the Raspberry Pi. It runs a quad-core Amlogic S905 CPU clocked at 1.56 GHz. We have 2 GB of DDR3 RAM. The GPU is a Mali 450 MP3. It has 3 pixel shaders and 2 vertex shaders. It's also clocked at 700 MHz. There are a lot of operating systems available for this, but Ameridroid sent me over the 16 GB eMMC module with Android 5.1.1 pre-installed. So that's what I'm going to be testing out in this video. So as you can see here, we have 30 GPIO pins, same pinout as the Raspberry Pi, an IR sensor, serial port connector, micro USB. It's an OTG port, and I'm pretty sure you'd be able to connect ADB with Android. HDMI, power jack, Ethernet 10x100, four USB 2.0 ports. On the back side, we have the micro SD card slot and a eMMC module slot right here. Pretty cool, there's our RAM there. Two gigabytes of Hynix RAM, DDR3. So let's see what kind of peripherals Ameridroid sent on over. First up, they also sent along the RTC battery shield here. This will keep all of your settings, keep the correct time on your board. A little battery built in there. Pretty cool. Next up, we have the 16 gigabyte eMMC storage module with Android 5.1 pre-installed. A Bluetooth 4.0 dongle. The official Odroid Wi-Fi module with antenna. An official Odroid C2 case, pretty slick. All the cutouts for everything. Now the problem for me when using cases is I'm always swapping SD cards and eMMC modules. And this will prevent me from doing that unless I take it back off. An infrared remote for the IR blaster that's built into the Odroid C2 and our five volt, two amp power supply. If you see the end here, this is a very small barrel jack. That's what the Odroid C2 uses to power the unit. So yeah, guys, that is awesome. Ameridroid carries all of this. Go ahead and check them out. Links in the description. So let's go ahead and move over 
like I said before, we have Android 5.1.1 installed, and that's what I'm going to start out with because it comes pre-installed on this EMMC module. I'm going to run some benchmarks, test out some games, and see how this board performs. So real quick, I figured I'd just install everything here. It's the RTC battery shield going on now. Simple install for everything here. Bluetooth 4.0 dongle. Just goes in a USB port. Anyone will work. It's brand new. It's a little hard to get in there. Wi-Fi with the antenna. So this thing should have some great range on it. It does not pick up 5G though. And on the bottom we'll throw the 16 gigabyte EMMC module on. Just make sure you line it up and push it down kind of firm. Don't break it now. It'll snap right into place. And that's it. All right, guys, here we are. First impressions, I've been messing with this for a little while. This board is very quick with this Android build. Now there's also an update available and there's a beta test of Android Marshmallow, which I'll be reviewing later on down the road. But right now, stock out of the box with this EMMC module and Android 5.1, this thing is quick. As you can see, I've installed a bunch of stuff and Basically, let's just go over the specs of the board. We'll open up IDA64. The Odroid C2 is made by Hard Kernel. We have two gigabytes of RAM, 1700 megabytes free. For the CPU, we have the Amlogic S905. There are four cores clocked at 1.536 gigahertz. Governor set to performance right now. Display, 1920 by 1080. The GPU is a Mali 450 MP3 GPU. It has three pixel shaders and two vertex shaders. Only supports OpenGL ES 2.0, but you'll be able to get away with playing tons of Android games. Now there are builds of Linux available and I'll be going over those also. I ran an Antutu benchmark straight off the bat. Stock heatsink, no fan, scored a 35,127. Not super impressive, but not that bad either for a tiny single board computer. Ridiculous, we'll go on down here. So my device, 35,127, Galaxy Note 5, 80,000. This is like a $500 phone, so really can't compare with any of these. Next one I ran was 3D Mark. So Slingshot is not available for this device, but iStorm Unlimited was because it does support ES 2.0. And I ran all of these benchmarks two times, no cooling, stock heat sink. So for iStorm Unlimited, we scored a 7,376 in iStorm Extreme, 4,377. Not all that great, but if we could run this on the Raspberry Pi 3, the Odroid C2 would definitely be leaps and bounds ahead. With the benchmarks out of the way, let's go ahead and test Kodi because a lot of you guys are going to get these four media centers. So this board does support 4K, but I haven't tested it yet. I just got a TV that will support that resolution, so I'll be doing a whole video on it later on. Kodi? What I did was I installed Apollo. Custom Cody build. My favorite build. I have a Bluetooth Razer servo controller connected to the Odroid C2 right now. Just go to TV shows, I guess. Exodus. Genres. Encounter at Farpoint. So I chose something really old. It might take a little while to find it. 
when it's an older selection, but these newer TV shows and movies that just came out last week will load up a lot faster. There's more people seeding them. As you can see, Data was sitting there checking it out. Oh, and I got it paused. So I was just skimming through here really quick to show you guys that it does work and it streams very, very well. Go ahead and exit Cody. So I want to get into a little bit of gaming. Right now I have Asphalt Extreme, Bully, and Minecraft Pocket Edition installed. I am using the Razer Bluetooth Serval Controller. Let's go to Asphalt Extreme. Very enjoyable frame rate. I believe there are some settings you can change to turn down the resolution a little bit in this game. Now, after we get through all of this tutorial and everything, we could probably go into those settings. But like it sits out of the box, the game is very playable. So yes, after you finish the tutorial, you can change to better performance or leave it to optimal. I'll go to better performance. And I also turned the sound on so you guys can hear So I don't notice much of a difference between performance and graphic fidelity by changing the settings. So you might just want to stick with the optimal settings that this game comes out of the box with. Runs great though. So Asphalt Extreme works great. I'm sure Asphalt Airborne will also run just as well. Let's go to Minecraft Pocket Edition. Looks great. Runs amazing. Let me do a dynamite test over here. Yeah, I'll just do one right here. So I've laid a bunch of dynamite out. It handled it very good. I was actually expecting it to lag out a lot longer, but we blew a hole in the earth. Tons of settings to mess with in Minecraft, so if you don't like this performance, you can make it even better by lowering the block distance and all kinds of stuff. Uh, shadows, there's, there's a couple other settings in there that will increase performance, but this seems really good to me. Let's try one last game. And that game's gonna be Bully by Rockstar. So I just got into it. Very beginning, I turned the music down. Little jittery. But, like always, most of these Rockstar games do have options to turn the resolution down and increase performance. We're going to try that right now. Clarity's on medium. Low. Let me get my bearings here. So it does increase performance quite a bit. But I can deal with that tiny bit of lag on medium because... This really, it makes a big difference in the resolution when you turn it down. Go back to medium. So you shouldn't have any trouble playing Bully Anniversary Edition on the Odroid C2. Looks great, especially if you got a controller. Another thing I forgot to mention is wired controllers do work. I did test a Xbox 360 wired controller before I hooked up my Bluetooth, and it worked fine. So that's it for now, guys. First impressions, the board is sweet. It's a very good price point for the performance you are getting. Now, the first question I'm going to get is, is it better than the Raspberry Pi 3? It does have more power than the Raspberry Pi 3, hands down, but... 
the Raspberry Pi 3 has tons of support behind it. The Odroid C2 has a lot of support also, but nowhere near as much as the Pi. It's really personal preference. If you want to run Android full speed on your big screen TV, I would definitely go with the Odroid C2 over the Raspberry Pi 3. There are some Android builds for the Raspberry Pi 3. You can search for some of my videos I did, but it runs like crap. So if you guys are in the market for an Odroid or a Raspberry Pi or even an LCD screen for one of your single board computers, go ahead and give Ameridroid a try. The link's in the description. They're US based, so you don't have to wait on that Chinese shipping or UK shipping. They have very competitive prices and the customer service is outstanding. I cannot recommend them enough to you guys. I love the fact that they're in the States and a lot of my viewers are in the States. A lot of them are in the UK, so they already have their suppliers over there, but Ameridroid here is awesome. Like always guys, thanks for watching.